After waiting over a year as an early pre-order backer, I've cancelled my Starlink service and I'm returning my Starlink dish after less than a week of owning it. And here's why. Starlink promised the unprecedented mobility of a high-speed, bi-directional, satellite internet connection using their network of low-Earth orbiting satellites, founded by Elon Musk, and shipped from Space Exploration Technologies of California. This felt like it was going to be the Tesla of the next generation internet. I missed out on owning a Tesla, so this was my next best chance to support my American Idol. Okay, he's South African, but who's counting? Delays, chip shortages, accidents, and other issues have plagued the Starlink system since launch. But there were other fundamental design and usage issues that made my experience poor enough that I'm boxing it all up and sending it back. First off, trees. Now, normally you'd think a clear southern exposure and mostly clear sky was good enough. But what was unexpected was the movement of the dish throughout the day, aligning itself to the constantly moving satellite trains. You can check this in their app, something only I realized after the product was on its way to me. Upon checking, it appeared a few very tall pine trees on my neighbor's property to the north would be interfering with the signal parts of the day. Ultimately, the only location I could likely get service was in the middle of my driveway. Ironically, on top of my electric car, or off my second story eaves, for which they don't have any available mounts in stock. Because of this interference, I could expect outages every two minutes, it said in the app. Not usable. As a live streamer, this would have been awful. Next, there's the complete lack of an ethernet port. Once I plugged everything in, I noticed there was no place to plug in my own router, like in the original ship units. For professional QoS, multi-WAN, VPNs, or other advanced setups, you probably don't want to run their combination router, which has almost no advanced user accessible features. Apparently chip shortages made the normal gigabit ethernet chips go from $3 to $30. This broke the bank enough that they just decided to forego ethernet entirely and give you Wi-Fi only from this single proprietary router, which they also didn't disclose before they shipped my crippled unit. The lack of mobility. Previously, you had to call support if you wanted to move your service to a new address. However, they've simplified this process and now offer an online form. Unfortunately, each time you move your service, you risk it becoming a one-way, go back to the end of the line operation with no indication as to the lack of capacity at the target area or volume of backorders they have. I had a friend who suffered with horribly slow DSL for years that lives just 11 miles away with beautiful clear skies who would pay double their monthly fee gladly for an unmetered high-speed internet connection. But that sector was oversubscribed and they wouldn't let me transfer to anywhere near that address. I even tried another friend's address further out from our population center and no dice. One of the other early promises of the Starlink service was the ability to use it anywhere. Elon's Twitter feed even boasted of this capability several times, which at present doesn't exist, and with a waiting list backlog deep into 2023, it doesn't look like it's going to be coming up to current subscribers anytime soon. Being a family that likes to RV camp and go boating in remote places, we could staycate easily if high-speed internet existed, which was another broken promise. We often camp in places that have significant tree cover or obstructions, given the wide amount of the sky this unit needs to cover. And lastly, the service cost. Having an unmetered high-speed internet anywhere sounded like a dream, and so far it really is just a dream. They had priced the service originally at $99, but like so many others, have recently increased their price to $110, even before I had my service working. With a strongly worded email, users were told that they can cancel their $600 plus investment and receive just $200 back, or the full amount if you'd been in service less than 30 days. So I had a very limited time to cancel my Starlink service and get a full refund of the hardware. Unfortunately, there was another catch. They would not refund me for the full month of service I had to prepay that I wasn't actually able to use. The support department blamed their inability to prorate, but in my opinion, I never received reliable service from them, and I'm out 99 bucks for this failed Starlink experiment. I shared this experience with several other of my nerdy friends, including some who are successfully using the Starlink service in very remote areas. The fact that I have two gigabit or better providers in my area already, around half the cost, made keeping this science project around just too costly. Hopefully Starlink is listening. Being transparent about shortages, increasing prices, 
and overall service limitations would go a long way. They're also not guaranteeing to keep their service unmetered. Their fact page says, for now, which is an all too ominous reminder that terms can change, just like with Xfinity and Verizon did with their unlimited plans. Hopefully someday Starlink will live up to the promises they've made, but for now I'm happy to give up my slot and my dish up to somebody else that could use it with these no limitations. This has been John, the net guy. Thanks for watching. If you want to know more about my channel and what I do, tap this logo up here and you'll see more of my work. It's okay. I'll wait.